Vic, the issue of God's existence uh, is a hot topic in today's world. Uh, you believe that God does not exist, and huge numbers of people, including many scientists, certainly philosophers and theologians, believe God does exist. What are the kinds of arguments that they use to show God exists mm -hmm. that you think are fallacies? Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, the classic arguments go back to Thomas Aquinas and his five different proofs, and they all basically amounted to the same thing, that you needed uh, uh, some, you, somebody to start the universe going, you needed to cause a first mover, uh, and so on. In, in modern terms, this is stated as the Kalam cosmological argument. It comes from Islamic sources, but it's been modernized. And it, it goes something like this. Number one, everything that begins has a cause. Number two, the universe had a beginning. So number three, therefore, it follows that the universe had a cause. And as Thomas Aquinas always said, and that's what we know as God. That's the way he usually ended his arguments. Well, let's look at each of those. First of all is the argument that everything that begins has a cause. Well, that's in fact not true. We can think of many examples in modern physics uh, where events occur in an uncaused way, an unpredetermined way. Uh, one example would be the atomic transition that takes place when you have an emission of light from an atom. You have a you have a excited atom uh, uh, where the electron is in a higher energy level. It drops down to a lower energy level. And there's no nothing in physics that tells us uh, when a particular uh, transition will happen. We could calculate the probability using quantum theory the probability of that happening, and so we can calculate intensities and things of that sort, which are kind of probability measures, but we can't predict what will happen for any individual atom. Another example is nuclear, nuclear decay. The decay of a, of a nucleus uh, is unpredictable, an individual nucleus. Again, we could calculate the probability, but we can't calculate, can't predict uh, which would happen. Uh, which particular nucleus will decay at any particular time interval. So we, we know this. In fact, the data very much agree with that. Uh, if you look at uh, the actual data from these, from these processes, it looks just like it, it should be if, if they were not, if they were random. They really show the characteristics of, of, of randomness. So there, therefore, the first uh, axiom of the cosmological argument has to fail because uh, there are examples of things that were uncaused and the universe could be an uncaused. And in fact, modern cosmology does view the universe as a, the origin of the universe as an uncaused ev an event. So that, that automatically destroys the cosmological argument. However, it fails the second <laughs> uh, uh, hypothesis as well that the universe had a beginning. Now, the argument is usually given that the Big Bang shows that the universe has a, has a beginning. Well, in fact, all it shows is that the universe that we have now uh, uh, it exploded from some tiny pocket 13.7 billion years ago, but we don't know that there wasn't anything before that. In fact, there are. Uh, uh, theories, models, published in reputable journals by reputable physicists that, that provide uh, a mechanism for the universe having uh, tunneled through from a, 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 a previous universe. And again, the, the, the modern theories of cosmology uh, have a number of such scenarios, and uh, so there's no reason to believe that our universe just began at, 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 that, at that time, or that the, time began at that point. The way theists would come back on both of those, on the first that they would say that you're employing the laws of probabilistics, and that itself 
uh, had to have a cause. So there has to be a way of causing the, the principle by which this all operates. And on the second, uh, they would say that however you want to take the chain back, at some point uh, it, there had to be a beginning, even if our current beginning is not the old beginning. I mean, there's always argument and counter-argument um, to, to, to these kinds of uh, uh, positions. Well, let, let, me, let me address that second one uh, about the, the chain. It's often argued that the universe uh, can't be infinite uh, because it would have taken an infinite amount of time to reach where we are now. Well, uh, infinity is a mathematical concept that doesn't apply to directly to physical phenomena. I mean, infinity is mathematically defined uh, uh, as a set and not a number. There's no number in mm -hmm. that's infinite. And uh, if you take the, the numbers, if you take the time axis, for example, and you assign a number to each, each uh, second or tick of the, whatever clock was you're using as your standard, and you count one tick, two tick, three ticks, you keep going in the future, and you never reach an end uh, because you just get a bigger and bigger number. Uh, those numbers are member of, members of an infinite set, but that doesn't mean that there's some final number where, you, where the set ends. Same thing is true for the negative numbers. You go in minus time direction, minus one, minus two. There's no, uh, there's no beginning to that infinite set of, of negative numbers. So it's not that the universe had a beginning an infinite time ago if the universe were infinite. Uh, it, it, it had no beginning. It, it didn't have any beginning just as it doesn't have any end. So uh, we don't have to begin the sequence in, in that way. Now as far as the probabilistic uh, laws are concerned, it's just like all our other laws, that there are certain basic laws that are more uh, that are just our our inventions and the way we describe the, the the way we describe things in terms of our mathematical models, and uh, it's just being it's just a way of being consistent in the way of talking. It's just like using language or or anything else. Mathematical statements are attempts to uh, to put things into a, a precise uh, uh, form that's uh, free of contradictions, and but it's still our own invention. Okay. Particular tech, uh, language. So we have the cosmological argument about first cause. Uh, you've dealt with that fallacy, as you would see it. What are some others? Design argument. Oh yes, that's another one. That's the one you hear most frequently. It's funny when you uh, talk to people uh, who are religious, and uh, look, and I respect. I, I want to make it clear that I certainly respect uh, their right to be religious. You know, I'm not telling them what to believe. <laughs> But they'll say, I believe because of faith. Okay, uh, but what's the basis of your faith? And they'll almost always say, well, okay, let's just look at the world around us. How could all of this have happened by accident? You know, I mean, it's always accident. Uh, and uh, how could you explain all this complexity in life? I don't know how to explain it. Uh, how, well, therefore, it must be. Uh, it must have some supernatural origin. Well, that's basically uh, an argument from ignorance. Just because you can't explain it, you can't understand it, that doesn't mean it's inexplainable. Uh, that uh, uh, science might someday be able to come up with an explanation. And uh, But let's just take the, the way the universe looks. Uh, and... and does it really look designed? And it turns out that when you look very closely at it, it not only doesn't look designed, it looks just like it should look if it wasn't designed. Why, that just, why is that? Well, it, uh, if you're talking about the complexity of human life, for example, or life in general, uh, it, it's, it doesn't look perfect. It doesn't look like an artifact. The eye and, and uh, the human organs uh, all have their little imperfections to them which can be understood very well within the framework of, of evolution. I mean, they look just like they would be expected to be if, uh, 
if uh, they evolve by the the hodgepodge uh, uh, processes of of evolution, and the same is true on the cosmic scale. You find that uh, the uh, data that we take in cosmology fit very well to a purely naturalistic picture, and uh, they look. The universe looks like it didn't come from any preceding universe uh, or from uh, uh, any uh, uh, non-natural cause. And there's no reason why the universe can't be self-sustainable, self-organizing. There's nothing that requires that something have a beginning, that something uh, uh, has to be created from the outside. And besides, if God uh, created the universe, and who created God? You, it's an end, God is really no explanation for the existence of the universe. It just puts back the explanation one, one, one layer. At, at its ultimate, you have to come in one way or another to something that's defined as self-existing. Whatever you want to pick, you have to have something that, mm-hmm. that has existence built into its essence, which is the traditional definition of God. Yeah, no, right. I mean, if God, but, uh, but you see the logic of it. Once you accept the fact that it's possible to have something that was, was not created, yes. then you, you have to pick. that something could be the universe. Yeah, you, just, you, you just pick you what you want, you, but yeah. you got to pick something. Right, so. <laughs> and uh, the simplest thing to do is to pick the universe. So. 